Chris Morris here. This is the first of a series of videos addressing the use of Google Sites in vocational education and training, more particularly in the retail services framework. So over the course of the videos, I'm going to be taking you through how we can set up a Google Site so as students can document their learning against the various competencies within the context of a ePortfolio. So you can see here I'm addressing the project or unit of work, what's your store policy? And I've embedded the competency assessment notice in the home page of my Google site. We're just calling this a dummy site at the moment because this is uh, for the uh, purpose of demonstration. So if I just scroll through this task here, you can see the task is broken up into four main parts and then part five is the work placement supervisor report. So each of these parts is a page across the navigational structure of the site. And you'll see across that horizontal navigation structure, each of the various elements of the introduction, for instance, is itemized there. So the first video is going to take you through setting up this structure. Fortunately for you, I'm going to provide this structure as the site structure as a template. But uh, I think it's still important to know how I would set it up from scratch. So I'm going to take you through that process now. So as you're probably aware, with our Cloud Share deployment or Google Apps for Education, uh, once I'm signed into Google Drive, over on the right hand side, I call this little grid the Apps Grid and you can gain access to Google Sites from that Apps Grid. Now, the sites that are listed here are sites that I own in the domain sid.catholic.edu.au or sites that have been shared with me individually. Okay, so uh, to start with, we're going to set up our Google site for the What's Your Store Policy ePortfolio task within our SID.Catholic domain. Uh, and then we'll talk more, more um, later about how this could be distributed to students via a template. So going into Create, and I'm just going to name my site here, and it's going to be called ePortfolio. What's your store policy? And you can see here that this will create a unique name for the site in the SID.Catholic domain. Now, my suggestion is to start with a blank site template. Um, should you wish to select a theme, you can do that down below. So I might just go with a a fairly standard theme, so let's go with um, toothpaste. And once you're happy with those selections there, you could, should you wish, tag the site. So categories might be VET. So that would mean if I made this available to anyone within the Archdiocese, or more broadly speaking, the public, that would be a public site, um, should anyone search for the site with the category VET, then this would come up. So I could put VET Retail Services. And now obviously these um, search terms need to be separated by comma. So I'm just going to leave that for the moment uh, with site description. This site will be used for ePortfolio in the Retail, excuse my typing, Retail Services Framework. Okay, so we hit Create. And you can see now my Google site has been created. Um, just to explain a few particular things around the appearance of my Google site here, you will see this is a unique URL. So no two Google sites can have the same URL have the same name but not the same URL so that's a unique URL to this site um, you can see down the left hand side here is a what's called a sidebar and should I start populating pages that will automatically populate there but uh, 
Generally speaking, the more preferred option is uh, the horizontal nav navigation bar, as per my example here. So over on the right hand side is our content area. So this is where all of our information will be stored within the context of this ePortfolio. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this uh, sidebar. I'm going to start creating pages based on the assessment task um, details and essentially bring you up to the point whereby we have this site structure as you can see here. Okay, so to get rid of the side map or sidebar, I'm going to more actions, edit site layout, and you can see up the top here is the ability to turn the sidebar off. Okay, so here is our um, site now, here is the home and the contents of the home page. Now, um, if you look at some of the uh, more aesthetically pleasing Google sites, uh, and the fact that we are designing websites now that should accommodate mobile devices, uh, I might just adjust my width of my site to be 90% of the screen. So essentially what that does is give, gives our eyes a chance to focus on the important content within the site structure. So I'm just going to hit enter and you'll see that will bring in my site um, to a nice manageable um, area there. So what I'm going to do now is click on the horizontal navigation and you will see now a home button appear up the top here, okay, which will give you an indication as to what our navigation structure will look like. So once I've added that horizontal navigation, I'm just going to leave that for the time being and going to come back to that and show you how we can populate the various top menu items and the sub menu items on this horizontal navigation structure. So I'm just going to close this up here and now I'm going to start creating my pages. So remembering the home screen will contain our assessment notification as per this site here. What I'm going to do now is create the sub pages. So um, if going back to our assessment task, you can see here that part one is the introduction. Okay, over here. So essentially this, this task involves the creation of a policy and procedures manual. Well, this is going to be a e policy and procedures manual presented as a site. Okay, so I'm going to hit on new page. And the first page is going to be called introduction. So all of my top level menu items I've decided will be in caps. And I'm just going to call it part one, which links back to the description in the task. Okay, so it flows on quite nicely there. Now, I'm going to put this at the top level and I'll show you why that's important in a moment. So it's going to be a web page. I'm just going to hit create. Okay, so you can see the page name up the top here. It's also displayed on the page area here. And this will essentially contain all, all of our uh, content for this particular aspect of the task. Now, I'm just going to hit uh, save in a second, but you can see an opportunity within this page to add files. So this would be if there were any um, additional resources that you may choose to uh, add to the page. Generally speaking, I like to contain my contents within the content area of the page. Um, so I can remove that item from the page display. I think having comments there might be useful. It might be useful for the teacher to be able to comment around the student work. So I'm going to leave the comments in there, but I'm going to just remove the add file. So I'll just show you how I go about doing that. It's just simply a matter of going back to the gears, page settings, and going to remove allow attachments. I'm going to show links to sub pages and allow comments again because that will serve my purpose of this ePortfolio. So you'll see that um, that's the way the page looks at the moment. Notice it hasn't populated in the navigation bar yet, but uh, I'll come to that in a second. So now if we go back to the assessment task, under this part one, there is 
uh, about our store. Okay, so that's the introduction part there. There is information about personnel. There's information around uh, shop administration, which is here. So I'm going to list these as items or sub-menus in my page or my site, I should say. So I'm going to click on a new page and the name of the page now is going to be called About Your Store. I'm going to put it as 1.1 which again links back to this component of the assessment task. Now you can see here I'm sticking with the web page template but at this time I'm going to put it under, so not at the top level, I'm going to put it under introduction part one. So it'll be a sub page of introduction part one. I'm going to create and again I'll go in and change those page settings to remove that add files. It's going to untick that and hit save. Okay, so you can see the um, trail up here. So you've got introduction, part one, about your store. These are known as breadcrumbs. Okay, and once I start setting up a structure, you will see these um, buried deeper and deeper. So you can see about your store. I'm going to go back to introduction here. Again, you can't see this in the horizontal navigation bar, but I'll explain that in a second. You can see the sub page here. I'm now going to new page. My second page is going to be called Personnel and it's going to be 1.2. It's a web page. Again, it's under Introduction, Part 1, and I'll hit Create. Okay, so you can see that here. Again, it adds the Add Files button or section of the site. I'll just go into Save. And again, remove that. Now, I could create a template whereby it would automatically remove that aspect of the page, allow attachments, but I'm just going to press on here and I won't worry about that as yet. So, I'll just add one more page called uh, Shop Administration and uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, so you can see now that I have my introduction, part one, which is addressing this component of the assessment task. And I have my sub-menu items or sub-pages about your store, personnel, shop administration. So the way I want this to be displayed is, is in a horizontal navigation structure like so. So I'm just going to take you through the process of doing that now very quickly. And it's all in the um, layout options. So I go up into the gears. I go to Edit Site Layout and I now click on the area where the horizontal navigation structure is contained. You can see there a button or a reminder pops up, edit horizontal navigation, so I'm clicking there and you can see the only horizontal navigation element being displayed at the moment is the home button. Here what I can do is I can add page and because I have stored my pages under introduction if I hit the plus sign there you can see they will all appear as so so I just hit OK and unfortunately you have to add them one by one so I add about your store and this is a sub menu item of introduction so I'm going to just quickly remove that there I'm going to add page I'm going to add introduction as the top level element of the navigation bar I'm going to add page and now add about your store and that's the sub element, so I'm using the indent button there. Add page, personnel, and you can see that it's inherited that same indent structure. Add page, shop administration, and hit OK. So once I've hit OK and close, you can see there I now have my horizontal navigation element, namely introduction, which is the first part of the task. And I have the sub-menu items here where my content will be displayed.